Picture one of your favorite outfits. Maybe it's a fancy look, <laughs> or maybe it's just your pajamas. But when you put it on, the sensation is like a second skin. You feel like yourself, comfortable, able to breathe a little deeper, hold your head a little higher. That feeling, in a way, is gender euphoria. It is the experience of being comfortable in your skin, fully able to stretch to the lengths of yourself. That embodiment and sense of connection is something that everyone deserves. Gender is a bit like clothing. For some of us, our clothes are just a way to dress ourselves. We wear what we always have and we don't think about it that much. For others, clothes are the ways we adorn ourselves as shrines, how we honour our fullest selves, our spirits, our ancestors. The possibilities are endless, just like with our genders. Our genders, like our outfits, are comprised of many different parts. One item of clothing does not an outfit make. Pronouns are a single aspect of our gender outfit, sometimes worn as the outermost layer and sometimes kept a little closer to the heart. But either way, if we spend too long focused on them, we're not looking at the full picture. Most of us are assigned a gender at birth, and that language is really important, assigned. Generally, the ways that we define and classify gender is presumptive rather than curious, prescriptive, not descriptive. We have been conditioned to make assumptions about who people are before we've met them before they've even been birthed into the world. The first question that we ask of someone who is pregnant, do you know what you're having? Is it a boy or a girl? And for generations, we have allowed that answer to inform the ways that we treat a person, even from infancy. The toys that we buy, perhaps the color we paint their nursery, the expectations we have for them, the opportunities that we offer them, whether we realize it consciously or not. We begin to picture their careers, their relationships, and who they may become in the world, all based on an anatomical part of their body that appeared on a fuzzy ultrasound picture. That's a lot <laughs> for a baby. <laughs> I was assigned female at birth. And there were many expectations placed on me about the kind of girl and later woman I would be. I think my mum always imagined that I would grow up to marry a good Jewish boy. I don't think she ever anticipated that I might <clears throat> become one. <laughs> but from about the age of four, I was adamant that I was a boy, kicking and screaming out of the girl section of Target and Pumpkin Patch, confusing many people in my life, whether I intended to or not. I do like to come out every couple of years just to keep people on their toes. I don't, I don't want them to get too comfortable. Though I will say that one of my harder coming outs was as a vegan, <laughs> my mum said, I know how to cook for a transgender person, but I don't know how to cook for a vegan. <laughs> Luckily for her, that one was just a phase. <laughs> as a child, people would call me such a drama queen. And I would say, I am not a drama queen. I'm a drama king. <laughs> perfectly fine with being dramatic, just as long as I was gendered correctly. And this phase of my life lasted for about five years, from the age of four until nine. And 
I use the word phase really consciously because it has been weaponized against queer people as a way of disproving our identities. Oh, it's just a phase is a line that's often used when someone comes out or rather invites people into who they truly are. I want to problematize the idea that phases are even a bad thing because after all, Everything in life is a phase. Childhood is a phase. High school is a phase. Thank God. <laughs> the person that you dated in high school was also probably a phase. Thank God. <laughs> Many things in our lives are, but that doesn't mean that they don't shape us or make us who we are. And that's one of the most beautiful things about being human is that we are not static and stuck we get to reinvent ourselves and decide who we want to be. I may not have met the expectations that my parents had for me, but that's the thing about expectations. They are meant to be exceeded. <laughs> there is often a misconception around transgender identities that trans people choose to go from one gender to the other, born in the wrong body. I don't believe that I was born in the wrong body. I believe that I was born in the wrong world. In order to better understand the realities for trans people, I want you not to imagine that you are actually the opposite gender, but rather for you to imagine that you are a can of lentils. Be bear with me. <laughs> Suspend your disbelief. This, this isn't vegan propaganda, not at this point. <laughs> you're a can of lentils and you're sitting in a factory. The worker comes over and slaps a label on you that says coconut milk. And you're like, uh, excuse me, <laughs> there's been a mistake here. I'm, I'm not coconut milk. You won't know that unless you literally open me up to look inside. But trust me, put me in a supermarket. Someone's going to buy me and add me to a pina colada, lentils in a cocktail, you know, it's not going to be a good time. <laughs> Being trans is not the process of this can of lentils becoming coconut milk or even becoming lentils, but rather the process of changing that label on the outside so people can see what was always on the inside. That process can look like getting surgery, taking hormones, but it can also look like people just believing you when you say, this is who I am. If we stop trans people from transitioning or having their identities validated, they will not cease to be trans, but they may cease to be. Getting misgendered every day is a death by a thousand paper cuts. The first one is a little painful, but when it happens over and over again, day in and day out, every time you hear, ladies and gentlemen, or go to the bathroom and there's nowhere for you to safely go, or someone introduces you at work with the wrong pronouns, it degrades your sense of self until you shrink. We know from the 2017 Trans Pathways Report, the largest study ever conducted on trans mental health in Australia, that almost one in two trans young people have ever attempted suicide. 48.1%. That is a scary statistic. But that's also my friends, my community. Using people's correct pronouns isn't political correctness gone wild or people being too sensitive. It is suicide prevention. Transphobia is a poison that seeps from the cracks of society and takes the lives of trans and gender non-conforming people every year. I believe that it stems from a very real pain that comes as a result of having to edit ourselves over and over to conform to gender stereotypes. Being told you throw like a girl or man up or 
you're too bossy or too sensitive. You must be on your period. Being yelled at for not quite performing your gender right, these reinforcements from childhood erode at our ability to be our full selves. And they destroy our imaginations for who we could be. Over time, we don't even need others to force us into boxes because we ourselves become the foot soldiers of the gender binary. Every time we look at someone and dib them not man enough or not woman enough, we aren't just reinforcing these ideas to our children, our loved ones, our colleagues. We are reinforcing them to ourselves. We are reminding ourselves that if we stray from the confines of the gender binary, then we are failing and we are not worthy of love and respect. I want you to really feel what I'm going to say next. Transphobia is unmetabolized grief for the parts of ourselves we have had to sacrifice to fit into the gender binary. That is why I believe that transgender liberation is the liberation of us all. When I was 17 and came out as trans, I was told by a family member that I might be unlovable. How many of you have believed that you are unlovable for one reason or another? What if liberation from the gender binary means a world where everyone feels worthy of love, not because we have succeeded in upholding a strict set of rigid rules, but just by virtue of existing, of being living, breathing, feeling creatures. Gender diversity exists everywhere in nature. Some fungi have over 28,000 sexes. And sociologist Myra J. Hurd has described some species as having so many genders, so little time. <laughs> There are vibrant transsexualities in coral reef fish. There are even female lions that have been known to grow manes and behave like male lions. In nature, I cannot be misgendered. When I walk through the forest, I do not get yelled at, stared at, or made to feel different. My gender is no longer oppositional or confusing, but rather relative to the rocks, the river, the trees, and the cockatoos. Trans people have existed for tens of thousands of years in many different cultures, and in many were revered for divinity and connection to masculinity and femininity. There is nothing new about existing outside of a gender binary. We are not discovering. We are remembering. Imagine if we were celebrating rather than stifling or grieving human diversity. I know a transgender child who came out in their first year of school and the school had a birthday party for them with a cake with their new name on it. The other kids weren't confused or horrified. They were just really excited they got to eat cake. <laughs> <laughs> Liberation is more than just the rote learning of pronouns or the adding of them to our email signatures. It is the deep and often painful reckoning of our own complex relationships to gender roles that have limited us, that have brought us harm, and that have caused us to harm others. It is opening our minds to the expansive possibilities that with approximately 7.9 billion people on this planet, there may just be almost 7.9 billion different ways of being. As a trans person, my greatest desire in life is not to be fully understood. It is to be loved, despite misunderstanding. When we take a step back, 
we can move beyond pronouns and begin to see the entire outfit, the one that makes someone feel really good about themselves, the one that makes them feel free, the one that frees us all.